Have you seen they've like they've, they've like stopped ticket sales and that kind of stuff? Pay per views off. All right. the Conor McGregor fights are back on private on YouTube. What's Take your trailer down in heaven? That's a bit weird, then. It. What's your take? Fighting out of the G Four Studios, Scotland. Paul Bearjukrag, Chris the Bad Guy, on guard. Ross Cooper. Presenting from the street or in the it's time for Leather Podcast. Oh, the, old, the old social media has been <clears throat> no bad for the G4. We've upped our game, haven't we? He's have, you have. And if you are involved in an on fault accident, then why not hit up G4 claims and uh, take away all that stress and just pass it on to the ladies? And if you haven't seen their social media, check out some really good, funny videos. The Specky Bastard one's done nearly a, a million plays. Is it? Aye. That's brilliant. It, that is a Scottish OG aye, aye. though, eh? It's like the one you just sent me on Instagram. That is a classic. Aye, have you... <laughs> it's uh, a guy on a plane and he's like... The Burger King. Yeah, with a Burger King hat and he's got like a face mask on. And he doesn't want a certain person on the plane. <laughs> I've you know. seen that. Oh, mate, grow up, eh? I think so. Get that person off the plane. You not know, seen that one? I'm going to I'm gonna guess, but... Who he's trying to get off the plane? He's racial. Aye, I thought that. Mad racial, like, man. <laughs> I don't like nobody <laughs> to see you. I know, it's unusual. Eh? Because of telly, so <laughs> don't like that. Chris will be here soon. Aye. Reading the Green Mile. You read the Green Mile? I've never read it, no. no it's I, quite like uh, Stephen King's work. There's more characters than in the film, more guards and stuff like that. Like, definitely more interaction with the guards, mm -hmm. which is a, a cool bit. It's a long time since I read it now. Probably, like. Have, have you got a book in the go? Hey, there's the boys there. I've been, oh, fucking hell, it looks like I've got nothing on. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, my balls are just hanging right out. <laughs> what you got to go? I've got, I'm still reading this uh, White War about the Italian front, the First World War. It's quite heavy reading. It takes a lot of reading. I didn't know that Spotify cut you off after 15 hours. Oh, audio audio audio? I didn't know that either. No, I've got another audio book I'm listening to, and it's <laughs> done me right at the last chapter. So I've got one chapter to go. It's fucking I've four days or something until I can can re listen to it. But I smashed most of that out in like two days called Storm of Steel. Ernest Junger, who's a he only I think he only died in the nineties, but he was like quite a big philosopher. So if he did philosophy at uni, you'll kinda know who he is, but I didn't know much about his his military life. It's fucking dark. It just it's basically him. Uh, his diary all through the all through the war, right. all through the first world is that, war. Is that quite tough reading as well? N no, because he's um, it's the first. It's probably the first audio book where I've heard the narrator because it's obviously no Ernest Younger because he's dead. But it's an American guy, and his narration's brilliant. Mm -hmm. And I know that's a big complaint to like some of the audio books. So I, I've I've, I've oh, finished the uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Absolutely brilliant. Does not end like how the movie ends. Oh. Like, so you know the movie ends with him, he's standing and he's got the fucking mm. can of dog food and then he ends up smashing the last in the face with Brett and John, all that. None of that stuff happens. So it's a complete different. <clears throat> and what happens is it gets to the point, you know, where... <clears throat> so just before all this happens, they have a party. Uh, the Polanskis have a party. Mm -hmm. And it's maybe after the party when the Manson murders happen. Mm -hmm. So what happens is... Um, <clears throat> It goes to the point of um, Leonardo's on the phone to the wee girl, you know, the wee girl that mm -hmm. he's, he's doing the scene with, and it's same two running, f rehearsing lines, and then that's it, it ends. The book just... They run their, they run their sessions, and they run like this back mm -hmm. and forward. He goes into the full story, like the full character, falls on the floor, gets back up, thanks to the wee lassie, and then that's it. And no so Polanski murders... No fucking text coming back or anything, that kind of shit. All right, so that was a book. Um, so a bit of an anti-climax. No, because you everything else it. that led into that point was great. Oh. And then obviously you get to, yeah, like, it's no Gene LaBelle, it's um, Brad Pitt's character, what is he called? Oh, I know what you mean. It's been, uh, Chris would be able to run, run it right off, but it's, it's, I, I, I finished it last week. But um, great book. 
I found a bag of books that I was going to bring in just to have um, just one that was the Wolf of Wall Street. So his again the book so different for the film. Eh? Mm-hmm. Is, it worth, is it worth reading? I, I enjoyed it. I enjoy. He's much more mental in the it? film. He's he's far fucking far wilder. That guy's a video is quality. Eh? Aye. <laughs> I did fit to try it. Right. Did you like that video, Greg? Yeah, it was good. <laughs> Talking about Gaza. Gave you a wee chuckle. Some boy. Um, so I read, finished that book, uh, back on Game of Thrones, the second book. Bit of incest going on. <laughs> Can it be it? <laughs> um, Lassie's jumping about with her tit Daenerys, she's walking about, she's the girl with the dragons. Just a single tit out. Just a single tit out. I don't know, there's there's something, there's a reason <coughs> she's got a tit out to make her become a less, to make her be, appear more fucking mm. queen-like. Can you hear us, Chris? He can hear us, I think. Aye, he can hear us, Aye. but we can't hear him. Is it, you get headphones, Chris? <laughs> I like how it. it's just like, yeah. <laughs> it's maybe worth trying just to see for his headphone. Hello. You hear me? Yes. <laughs> Victory. No, we were just talking about um saw you reading the Green Mile and then we went off on one there. Just wondering how you are. Hi man, it's like I only if you gotta get me reading, it's gotta be either on a plane or beside a pool. Um, I don't know why my attention span is no good at home. And uh, and but this book is like I'll probably got to finish this book here, which is fucking is, is big for me. Uh, no, because I'm enjoying it. I, I think it's just an easy read, and I enjoy the film. So you're kind of reading it in Tom Hanks' voice, you know what I mean? It's like. <laughs> But, that's um, it's good. It's that's good what film. I was saying to Paul. There's a lot more like in depth for the guard. I don't know how far through it is how far through you are with it, but I remember reading uh, it, um, and there's a lot more with the guards and stuff like that. A lot more individual stories with him. Coffee still a black guy. Aye, right. Because you know aye, sometimes man, yeah. sometimes they, they they mix they mix it up a little bit. Uh, what is it he's in jail for? Uh, <clears throat> so obviously, like he's been accused of killing the two wee twin lassies, man. Mm-hmm. But it, was, it was quite graphic in the detail of how they died, which was a lot better in the film. Um, but obviously, you, we know we know that he didn't kill the wee lassies. Yeah. Sorry, fucking bring them back, obviously. But that 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 that, that chapter was really good. I enjoyed that. But you're quite gripped on that because it's it's like every other book in it, it goes in, it can go into more detail mm-hmm. with ones. The same with the the other guys on death row. It tells you more about them. So like in the film, you didn't really. You mind the Native American guy? It doesn't. I don't think it tells you what he done in the film, but it does in the book. The same with the guy from New Orleans with the French accent. I, I think he uh, burnt the restaurant. I burnt in the restaurant or something. Is that not right? What he did? Is that honestly? No, he, he, he raped and killed the lassie, but he dumped he dumped her body in a dumpster and set it alight, and then it caught fire to the restaurant and killed like another six people or some shit. Like that. Mm-hmm. So it's good. But in the film, he's quite quite a quiet wee French guy, isn't he? You kind of feel sorry for him, but he's end a, of the day, he's still a fucking mad beast. He's I mean? a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, do you think that see come up with these stories and how graphic some of the the murders are and all the shit that goes along? You need to be kind of fucked in the head. Why? Like, and, the, Why? and Stevie King, he's blasting out books. He's he, he writes books for fun. Mm-hmm. Aye, aye. Uh, he was he was always my favourite when I was growing up. Even though I didn't read his book, I had a mad obsession with collecting stuff. Mm-hmm. So even like videos, I used to collect a lot of VHSs and and a lot of the James Bond films. I collected all of them, even though I wasn't a pure fanatic. But I, I had something in me that I enjoyed collecting stuff, and I, I collected Stephen King books, even though I didn't read them all. You're still so kind of the same, aren't you? With regards to like DVDs and books, you mm-hmm. go, you've got like a, uh, a massive collection uh, yeah, of videos, uh, DVDs, videos. Wait, Jim. Uh, Probably does have videos. I seen somebody online <laughs> was selling a VHS uh, for a hundred dollars, like like a player. Like no, no, just the video itself, which is kind of a bit mental. You think like uh, they were a pound? <laughs> that's like something for your generation of kids, which was just something that we, we ended up filing in the bin. Hi. Having to, re- having to rewind stuff, remember that? I know, you take it. back to the, the, the <laughs> she were renting them. We, we used to rent a fair bit. I remember, like, the reason, one of the reasons I like Ghostbusters, we had, like, 
stolen one of the VHSs from the from Blockbuster. We, when we say we stole it, just never took it back. There wasn't like, uh, yeah, like, like, like fucking sliding it in your jacket. And it had like, do you remember they used like to have the big, they used to have the big plastic sleeve? <laughs> and it used to go in the top. It was <laughs> fucking <laughs> solid, man. You used to stick your horn in and shit like that. Um, so we uh, had that. Uh, and I used to love Ghostbusters. The original was one of my favourite films. Probably still is. But Blockbuster was nah, cool. Yeah, you, could, to, you could I was, rent I was, games. I was a global, I was a global video guy, so it was the same thing. It was like the blue solid sleeve. But you would go and like, I used to go with my mom and dad, and you'd like, like one popcorn. Obviously, you not know I mean we weren't giving a fuck about the films. Like, can we get two bags of popcorn? <laughs> But um, we went through the same thing. We didn't even turn shit, and then you end up bad for the uh, fucking blacklisted video for videos. <laughs> Add it the to the video shop, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fucker. Stick it back through the slot. Do you mind that? Like, but then, go back on the Sunday because it would be shut. What kids, was shut? Kids have no ideas. What we had Aye. to like, and then you'd be excited I'm, for a Friday if there mm-hmm. was like a big release, and you're like, the turtles is out. I bet, <laughs> bet there's some mad pervert out there that used to shag these sleeves, man. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, did I tell you that? I thought, I kept that secret. <laughs> but I have... Paddy, do, Paddy do it the inside wheel at a stroke or something. I always remember the big one for me, Crash Bandicoot, came out on the PlayStation. And this was like big, and oh, I mind man. going up to the video shop and I'm having it to rent for the weekend. And you get it on the Friday afternoon after school and it fucking had to be in there. And you're like still playing it on the Sunday as late as you possibly right. can before it's got to go back in the fucking letterbox. But oh, remember, maybe, maybe Crash Bandicoot. Up. Crash Bandicoot was the only one that I couldn't get my mom. My mom used to take a computer off his man, <laughs> and I couldn't get my mom off Crash Bandicoot. She was like a addicted to it, man. And I was like, "It's my short mom." And she's like, "Fuck off!" And I'm like, "For sake, man." I used to say, "I love video land. You'd go down and you'd, you'd do a bit of rent, and it was video land where I get my computer games. Because right. um, obviously I was blacklisted for Global and uh, Blockbuster. <laughs> that was my video collection. Was a couple of blue blue boxes. But uh, do you remember when you could used to get like games for a fiver mm-hmm. for the PlayStation because mm-hmm. everything was chipped, right. and you could go, right. like five pound." A computer game when they were like 30 quid or something, 20 quid. Right, and the boy uh, would just sell them behind to, the I, hotel. I used to get the, the chips Rain, Rain Man. Rain Man. Uh, remember Rain Man? Mm-hmm. You gave me the fucking I'm big punch. I always remember that when because I always had that chip. It was Rain Man. It's fucking chip. Did mind, you man. ever have to start up your computer with a real game, take it out, take and it then out. put, in, a, put in your fake game? And you would spin it. Mind I, that. I, I, you you, you got to spin it. <laughs> Like, I, you had to deal with that shit. I know. <laughs> and kids now just go. I was on necessary. Uh, they can just download shit. My son was talking about the other day the memory cards that go into your PlayStation. He was like, "It's mad that they filled up and you had to take them out." I'm like, "Lewis, you had to write on it mm. what game it was and where you uh, were, or you if, would." Do- uh-huh. If you're going to your pal's house, you take it like, oh, "I'll bring, I'll bring up. I've, got, uh-huh. I've unlocked such and uh-huh. such." He would go up to their house, bring the memory pressure, card. A pressure. I'm pretty sure my mate had to turn his PlayStation 1 upside down, man. To I'm do, sure that. To do the chip game, I remember that as well. Yeah, yeah. I am sure. It was upside down, you like, what the fuck have we done? Where did your PlayStation, mind you just took it to the boy who chipped the PlayStations and they came back the morn? Oh, right. have we lost Bungard there? I have just lost him. Oh, no. I'll send him in our link. That's all right. right. But um, I... Where did it go, mate? I, you just come back the morn and get it. What, what was actually involved in it? Was it very do? easy? Because you had to, like, that was fucking giving this boy dough to chip my PlayStation. But the same again, it wasn't that expensive to get it chipped. No, no. And then games were pennies, eh? I know. That was the beauty. Of it. And it was just a disc with it written on. <laughs> we right? were actually talking about this because we used to go to spa at my bit when I stayed in Tade Nuke. Mm-hmm. And they used to give you a list for behind the counter. Aye. And you mm-hmm. would get them at the shop. Can you imagine that nowadays? I know. Grassed in two seconds. <laughs> grassed in two seconds. Mate, if the like shop along the road for me sells vapes to anyone under 18, they're grassed. So That's like fucked I'm, up, man. I know. I, I mean that is becoming a bit of an issue for kids nowadays. <laughs> vapes it? is it's a becoming thing, quite popular for kids to do. They're aimed at kids. Because they see all these fucking YouTube wallopers. It's it's mad now to think people smoke fags when I mm. see them at work in it because why would you smoke cigarettes? You've got to go outside. I was going to out. clarify that for him that's listening that doesn't understand what a fag is. Oh, sorry. Cigarettes. We don't we don't shoot no, gays here. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I like it's you can smoke vapes inside, you're in the like I don't know. Are you allowed to smoke vapes inside? Aye. You, well, I don't know if you are, but we don't we don't chin you for it. Right. So if you sm- if you're smoking a vape inside, I'm not fucking pulling you for it. Aye. It's a waste of my time. 
kind of. I, I think there is pubs that do vape free. Like you can't vape inside either. And you can't do it if it, but you get chucked out of the stadium for vaping. Inside? Aye, mate. But taking cokes, all right. Aye, I know. Oh, yeah, I saw boys vaping on the plane. Serial vapors. <laughs> Serial vapor. <laughs> I see boys on the plane, they were just like that, putting it up their top. <laughs> Talking about playing, how was the ride? Because this is the this was quite a big ride for you, a, a big journey for you and your 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 weeing. Um, how many hours was it? Aye, it was, uh, the first one was eight hours to Chicago over here. Um, the first couple was were quite rough because she was just she wasn't settling, and we had like obviously our iPad and stuff like that and games to play with. But that that passed pretty quickly, man. And I was just like, ah, oh, this is going to be hell. But she's eventually settled and she's fell asleep for a couple of hours, which was good. Mm-hmm. Um, but she's just, she will talk to anybody, mate. Like, honestly, she will, which is a good thing. Aye. Like, every single person. So the second flight was to San Francisco and it was only like four hours. But we're sitting up, up at the, the back. So it's like a 50 seater, 50 row seater, basically. So we're right at the very back. But she's in front of me, she's walking up the plane. I swear to God, she's high fived every single person <laughs> in the aisle seat. Like, one after the other, then they're eating it and they're all doing it. 50 people. And she, well, she was like, something out of the Beatles, man, like some superstar. Like, you know what's true, man? And I'm, I'm, I'm standing beside her, we're up behind her with all her bags, you know, just watching her. Just, That's just cool. Her life, well, I love that. But I, so, and even about here, she just goes up to anybody. Hi, how are you? And she just, she's just loving it. She's absolutely loving it. She's in the pool there. Um, and she's just about to see the, the sea lions in her so I could do this. So she's, she's mm-hmm. loving it, man. She's loving it. What have you got planned? Well, you're at San Francisco um, in San Francisco? I'm still still here. Um, going to go to walk around the, the Golden Gate Bridge the, the, just after this. And then we're going to Alcatraz. We're going, um, the wind's not coming to Alcatraz, though. And um, she's her mum, her mum and dad's here. That they're going to Vegas tomorrow. We'll be going to LA. Right, thanks. Uh, so she she's got to spend the day with her grand, her, her mum and me, Lauren and her dad. are got to go to Alcatraz, and then I'm training jiu jitsu tonight. Actually, where are you booked, Danny? It's a, a gym called Studio Eighty Six um, Jiu Jitsu, um, just around the corner, really. But looks like they've got like, some. Some browns, blacks, and purples, blues belts, and that. They, they said I can come round. So it's no gee, no gee. Uh, just a wee, you know what it's like, just a wee, a wee, but a wee move about and uh, a wee sweat up. Good um, off the and plane then, and stuff as well. See, I, I always enjoy going mm-hmm. to other places and mm-hmm. see if I get an opportunity to grapple. And uh, maybe not right. spar, maybe not uh, boxing, that kind of stuff, but definitely grappling because it's safe, relatively safe. Right. Sometimes you go to some gyms and people just want to take your head off, but. Mm-hmm. Grappling's one of these things where we know we can keep ourselves nice and safe and uh, it's good to test your level and see what it's like because obviously being a black belt and being a higher level belt, you want to know that I'm a legit. Yeah. Uh, it's good to get a few at uh, different countries as well. And in jiu-jitsu, you can literally rock up to any gym in the world and, and train. It's no way. <laughs> you don't need to, you don't need to speak the language. Aye. Uh, it's a good thing about the, the sport itself and yeah, I'm not going in there to fucking like go for the coach. You know, I'm trying to sub him. I'm, I'm not that guy. I'm on holiday. I'm just, <laughs> just want to like, move about and just test it a wee bit and enjoy it. Just Meet see something different. Aye, right, that's it. You booked in yeah. any other gyms while you're there? I am. I'm, I'm, I'm going back over to the Nick, Nick Diaz Academy um, in Stockton and Lodi. Um, obviously, I think I'm going to. There's a, there's a presser. There's a Nick Diaz in. Um, Masvidal Presser That's right in And there's, Saturday. And there's Saturday, also Big Nick oh. Diaz news as well Isn't there With what's just uh, been released so I might be going to I might be going to Presser <clears> And watch <throat> Get a laugh at that um, I'm also uh, Which I found out last night Got to be I guess The, 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 the Cage Warriors here <laughs> Oh nice one Oh really Was it San uh, Diego Right Friday, Friday, Friday night man So I think I'm going to be I guess Fighter on that So Is it outdoors No it's in a casino is it? That's cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that wasn't that wasn't part of my plan. I just found out last night because um, <laughs> I'm in I'm in LA, so it's like an, an hour away. So I mm-hmm. bought a car, so I'll jump there for some fights. Good right. man, quality. Maybe call out some American guys. <laughs> Lots to be doing then. Aye, aye, I've got shit loads today, man. Um, but just 
just enjoying it. Oh, Champions League was actually quite nice. I've been a couple of times, but I've actually enjoyed it near this time. I um, think last time I was signing like quite a fucking rough patch. Um, but this is quite nice. I'm doing it at the Fisherman's Wharf. It's right on the coast. Um, and I have caught a lot of these restaurants and bars and shit about it. There's a few, few dodgy cunts for that way. Aye. What did you think of the, the water to Alcatraz with the swim, obviously? So the swim is... <laughs> I think it would look that bad. It's not that bad to me. Like, no. Maybe if it's like a bit choppy and the current's a bit different, but like, go out there, I'm like, I think I could swim that. You ain't get fans yet? <laughs> swim out and swim I back? I think I could swim it. I, I, I wouldn't either because I know there's, there's sharks in there. So <laughs> is there not like a... I wouldn't even win it, man. Is there not like an Iron Man where you do it? Triathlon, the for triathlon? sure does it, aye. And, uh, and you, mm-hmm. Do you swim round Alcatraz? I think you swim round it. Aye. You definitely swim <clears> out there <throat> and back. It's not like a there oh, to the coast. That's me and Dodgy, you end up fucking getting pinged off the rocks, man. Aye. Did, um, we, did we not check this before? Because Ross said Diaz done it. Aye. One of the Diaz brothers. And then it turned out he'd done it a few times, eh? Aye. He'd done it more than once. That's just because he's fucking training to swim that. <laughs> obviously, the, the jail's not you. <laughs> but um, obviously, these guys these guys train for the triathlons, have done a few. So that's no massive to them. No. If you've been in jail <clears> for like a long period of time and you're in Alcatraz and you've, you've managed to get yourself to the point of you're going to swim that, you must be fucked. Uh, you've you've done everything to get to that point and you're like, right, you ready to swim? And the four boys, that, well, you'll probably find this out on the tour, Chris, but the, the four boys who, they're the only four, to have, I'm sure it's four, to ever escape the night that they, they know that they got to the water. They don't know how they got on after that. Was, they, there, was there not a boat involved? Some sort aye, of they had made a boat, boat or aye, so they don't know how they got on, well, but... No, Quint, Quint Eastwood made it and he's 95 years old, not me, so I think I've got a good chance. <laughs> You've got a chance. But it's mental to think that night was like dark, stormy, really bad, so... Just in for the bushes. What were you going to say, Greg? I was going to ask uh, Bungie if he's got any move locations planned. I'm sure he will have. Uh, yeah, I've, I've already done a couple. Um, Planet I've of the Apes. A, a, Steve Mc, a, a Steve McQueen film. Um, Bullet. You've seen that one? It's like... It's a, it's a big car chase, so it's it's been like so. I took you away in it last night for a walk, and I was like, "Oh, the location's only like a mile away, but I don't know if you know San Francisco, but the it's like this. The every road is like crazy, crazy steepness, and then uh, um, it was a mile. You stop one street, and it was just like that for one mile pushing the rain, <laughs> and it was just like honestly in the heat as well. It was fuck. And then we go there, it's, a, it's an old classic, it's a Steve McQueen film, but it's a, it's a big famous car too, it's in it. It's called Bullet, B-U-L-L-I-T. Uh, um, so we, we go, I go to some of the old cases, but the hardest thing was coming back down with the rain, because you're obviously, <laughs> you're, you're holding her, you're not really pushing her. You just don't want to like roll, roll a mile down the hill. So I done that one, and I done a James Bond film um, at the pier, it's called uh, A Beauty to Kill, mm-hmm. Roger Moore. Mm-hmm. Um, so there was a scene at the pier, so I got that, um, and then he got fucking, I turned around, there was a big pelican right at my shoulder, I fucking shot myself, man. <laughs> Literally shot myself. I, I, I don't know if it, it was already there or it flew in, but I turned around and it was just right there, it was like turning to Jumanji, see where it just covered the fucking, the, the, the game. <laughs> it just goes off there, I was just like, um, so I done need to, um, just yesterday, but obviously I'll, I'll do something the more at Alcatraz, uh, the day at Alcatraz. And I've got a lot planned in doing the LA and stuff for that. I'm going, in fact, I'm going to Santa Cruz for the, all the Lost Boy stuff. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that one. That'll be a good one. Mm-hmm. Because the actual, the real comic book store still there and they did the actual real comic. So I'll, get you, I'll grab you a comic, Paul. The yeah, actual real one. Have you seen it? You like Lost Boy? Aye, aye, aye. It's a cult it's classic, classic, isn't it? Aye, aye. aye. So that's, it's got a wee like, <clears> hose walk and a wee theme park and a wee beach here, so I think. We we'll going to be the side and I get Santa Cruz and then make our way down the coast towards like um, <clears throat> Italy and stuff like that. Like, how you know, how like, long is you your week, Chris? Uh, ten days. Ten days. You, you always uh, see anywhere you go, you always you always seem to squeeze in. Ten so days seems like a lifetime, man. You squeeze in so, so much. much yeah. I know. Oh, I've got shit ones today, but I'm actually just enjoying just relaxing. Um, it's what all these are for, I suppose, isn't it? Just but the way you've got it in. That's all. Well, the body coke's a wee bit off. Aye. So we were up. Yesterday we were up. 
at like two, three, four in the morning, five in the morning, right? We're waiting for the breakfast, still my half six, still real fucking bright eyed. So half six when my daughter away doing man, right? The way in is singing all the way down. We go to breakfast, it's mobbed, I mean cured, and there's like this the big kitchen's massive day, so it's like two big sitting areas. We get we'll have pancakes, whatever, we come back up. She's still singing all these songs, but you still need to remember it's like six in the morning, seven in the morning. <laughs> and as we're coming in the, the door, the room door, I had to tell the way to be quiet because she was being very loud and singing. As we opened the room door, like somebody like, aggressively opened the room beside us. Like, why they want you to just rip the door open? But we just closed the other door just in time. And all you heard was a big, massive, big shush, basically. Yeah. Like, and I was just like, I was like, Aye, that, that's all right. That's, you can take that because she was being loud, you know what I mean? So we were singing, like, though. Uh, and then all I heard was footsteps, and I was like, right, you can shush me in the. You can shush me in the corridor because that's good game. You chat my door. Right, <laughs> knowing your own room. You chat my door. <laughs> like, ah, that's, that's a different argument altogether. <laughs> like that, right? So, so I it was, it was funny, man. Well. Have you, on the plane ride, did you have any series to watch? Did you watch oh. any? Oh, no, but this is what I did want to speak to you about. The Iron Claw. Oh, the my movie? fucking God, man. Wow. Oh. Unbelievable, mate. I, I watched on that plane, uh, the first plane. You just need to watch it. You actually need to watch it. So I was the, I was the two clued up in the, this, it's, a, it's about a pro wrestling family called the Von Eriks uh, in Texas. But I was the two clued up on their backstory about the Von Eriks too much. I kind of knew the Texas Tornado was one and that, etc. But as, do you know the ending out? No, it's, Aye, is this a Zac Efron film? It is, it's, it's, they're a family yeah. that's uh, kind of riddled with um, bad luck. Uh, uh, and there's there's actual there's uh, actually uh, family gosh. members that aren't, that, that aren't in the film. And the same yeah. thing, uh, the same thing kind of happens to the, the, to, happens to the whole family. Don't want to waste uh, it for uh, you because so, it's a really good, really so, good song. Aye. Uh, uh, basically, there's, there's, six, there's six sons, but there's only five in the film, I think. Mm. They, they've, they've cut one out. They, they cut Chris out, you know what I mean? How dare they? Um, but I couldn't believe it. All the shit was happening, but it was all, it was all true events. True, all true stories. Uh, um, but I was watching that in the plane, and I'm just like, this is fucking amazing, man. Zach um, Efron looks a bit different, Zach doesn't Efron. he? Oh, Prince of Specimen, obviously, he's probably the, the good stuff, but he's still in some shape, man. Hey. Um, so there's a bit where, basically, why Zach Efron... He didn't really, he was brilliant everywhere, but he, he wasn't uh, good on the mic, Paul. So there's a lot of times where he, he's trying to do takes. Um, and I just remember me and us too trying to do like, the promo shots. The like, promo like, and, and, <laughs> and, and we just kept laughing and all that. Did, did we know, actually, we never actually finished that part. because we kept laughing? We're like, we'll come back later. <laughs> did you not drop the mic at one point and we'll keep walking off? Like, I, I, I caught it. Like, like, if I, you have to, if you haven't seen Iron Claw, you don't even need to be a pro wrestling fan, but just need to know that that's actually a real story about mm-hmm. uh, one of like wrestling's most famous families. Um, but the dad was about uh, like he was like he the dad was a wrestler, and then he was like he never got the world title in wrestling. Basically, and he was like he wanted it in the family, so he's, he's pushing all his sons. He was a bit uh, he's a bit of hard ass, but then mm-hmm. but then he was he's a mm-hmm. bit of a prick when when you think about it, but. He's forcing them all to be world champion and needs to try and pick one to be the best and all that and then shit always happens to them all. But I fucking loved it, man. Honestly, I really loved it. The only thing I didn't like was the guy they portrayed as Ric Flair. Um, it was just, they just didn't sound like Ric Flair and it, it was quite stupid looking, to be fair. He was trying to do like the, the Ric Flair interview and the, the flamboyant and all and it just looked like that's just stupid, man. Mm-hmm. But, Almost brilliant, man. So I watched that, watched Training Day. Um, Can he beat Training Day, though? Eh? Aye. <laughs> aye, it was, it was so, so good, good man. mate. It was so good. Um, I don't know what I oh, was watching. Shot Island in the Lord of the Rings, the first one, Fellowship. That yes. was me, man. It was in Goldie. Did you, uh, uh, have you seen the, the video of the guy, uh, everybody's on the plane watching the, like, say it's the UEFA final or the World Cup final and everybody's watching it in the plane and there's one guy watching Lord no. of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of these, like, it's one of these, like, it's been taken for the back of the plane and you see everybody's screen 
and everybody's <laughs> watching the football. It's like a massive event. I don't know if it's the World Cup, European Cup, whatever mm-hmm. it is. It's some sort of final, and one guy's just watching all the rings. I'm like, fucking yeah, good for him. Did you <laughs> see the? That'd be useful. Aye, did you see the new thing he dropped? The new trailer for Ring of Power? No, I'm not. Ring of Power season two. Aye, um, I'm excited for it. I like, I, I love Lord of the Rings. I um, do too. I know it's not following the same kind of mythology for the actual, well, the first season didn't really follow it very closely, but then you get that, and they're obviously trying to make it, adapt it for the TV, but they've spent a billion pounds, one billion pounds on season two of Rings of Power. For and it'll be Amazon Prime, really? Right? Is, aye, a billion. Man, that's <clears> fucking <throat> wild. Amazon Prime is smashing stuff the now, though. But uh, everybody's jizzing in their pants because uh, Tom Bombadil's there. For him that doesn't know, Tom Bombadil was maybe in the first film. Um, he saves the 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 Shire rats from dying in the Barrow Downs. Uh, so everybody's excited because he's there. And then it's now leaning into this thing where the the actual wizard. Potentially could be Gandalf. Oh, for season what two. Is, mm. what, 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 so he's the stranger. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, 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 the way it looks, the way it looks, the armor, everything that goes along with it looks amazing. Was it was it no one of the biggest battle scenes ever recorded or something like that? Was it for oh, the like first uh, season? I didn't. I might have made that up, right? But something's telling me. So it's like it's the CGI. It's like all the <laughs> so rather than them filling everything with CGI, they're using a lot of actual. Like uh, they'll they'll build the sets, mm. um, and then obviously the armor. So they're basically building an army. Um, so I, I'm yeah. I'm definitely excited for a season two coming out. There's obviously the the new Gollum films going to be out as well. I saw that. The, aye. Aye, the hunt for that. Gollum. Aye. So that's that. in between. That's in between. He's a big character. Aye, like it's in between <laughs> when the when Gandalf leaves. So. Gandalf leaves the Shire after Bilbo's birthday in the, mm-hmm. the the movie. He goes to Aragorn or the Rangers of the North and says, listen, can you hunt for Gollum? And then yeah, they track him in Mordor. He's already been caught and that's where you see the bit where it's like, where he's fucking getting tortured. Mm-hmm. Ah, I love all the rounds, fucking, oh. I'm into that. I, I didn't enjoy the first season of that Ring Tower. I know, honest, and I the, the, the first couple I just didn't get hooked, man. I didn't get. I didn't do you, know, not, I you, know, you know what annoyed me? <clears throat> I was down with. I, I kind of liked it, and I was like, right, I'm, I'm in, I'm in. Mm-hmm. I'm willing to invest a lot of time into this because I love Lord of the Rings. I know you've got to say. Go for it. Uh, they showed the, the the Game of Thrones one at the same time, is it? No, 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 no. It I was the. Know. It was like a sort of transvestites. I didn't like. And I'm sure, I'm sure Greg will fucking bang them out at the bottom. There's like these kind of dudes in black. <sighs> fucking, they're just ticking the box. I know what you're saying. I get you. Just say it, Paul, come on. Saying Lord of the Rings went woke, mate. Woke. Uh, there, was, there was also black elves. There was. And if GRR Tolkien was alive today, I can assure you, he would not have been fucking on board with that shit. Yeah, he's just trying to fucking shoehorn everything in. So uh, they did. Not I think it was a... Uh, Everybody was, feels a place. Was, was, there was a black dwarf wife as well, wasn't mm-hmm. there? There was a few. Like, I'm, I, I'm not hating on... I'm not hating, but... You can't even know just... Do you think there's any trannies jumping about the middle there? Ah, you, you know what no it's chance. like? Sometimes you've talked to your dick in between your... Tucked the deck in between your legs and done the dance. So there's, that's just what this guy was doing. There was dwarves, there was elves, there I was everything except. I could, <laughs> I could touch a Bilbo in that. Ah, he's in the fucking the Hobbit hole. Just, <laughs> hey baby. He's a bit of a soft cunt. <laughs> <laughs> but I, like, I, I thought it was good up until, I, I didn't really like him. I didn't really think they added anything to it. Um, and I think it was just kind of this way, we're, we're going to shoehorn this shit right in here. I saw a lot of, after that came out, there was a lot of stuff online, people fucking uh, taking shots at Tolkien eh, and saying that Lord of the Rings was anti-Semitic and stuff like that. Just racist piece of shit. Aye, and saying his books were based on fucking different groups were different races and things like that. He did write them in the trenches, didn't he? Well, he definitely was in that he fought at the saw, mate. Mm -hmm. That's where he's meant to have got like the inspiration for Smog the Dragon and that. Like his his section of trench got attacked by a boy with a flamethrower and stuff. So again, like you said earlier, to be an author of these, like Stephen King, your head is probably a bit fried. Ah, and there's shit. a good chance that Tolkien's head was more than a bit fried. And fucking, he probably did have some beliefs that were a bit... 
not as accepted today. Like he probably didn't he like certain groups of people. He probably didn't he. It's the, <laughs> the anniversary D Day of the day, Ross, isn't it? No. Is it not? Sixth. I thought it was a day. No. What's the date of the day? Fifth. <laughs> fifth. You're wrong, buddy. It's tomorrow. It's tomorrow, my man. Sake, man. That was my Unlucky. moment. Yeah. Good effort, though. Was what, moment. what you could do is you could hey. cut it. You hey. could cut it. I've got all the power. I know. Hey, coming, coming away from uh, movies, though, that I don't love talking about movies, but how, how got it, Jenk? Michael Chandler. <laughs> Ah, I guess I got fucking <laughs> fucked up in it. Nicky's mere gutted. Nicky's mere gutted that Ian Gary will be able to share a card. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you seen they've like, they've, they've like stopped ticket sales and that kind of stuff? Pay per views off. All yeah. the Conor McGregor fights yeah. are back yeah. on private on YouTube. Put your trailer down in heaven. That's a bit weird, isn't it? What's your take? It, it seems like it's not going to go ahead. I say the McGregor camp, so I think like the oh, he never pulls out, but they might be in there. Or it's just like I don't know, maybe I don't know. But it's definitely like the the corner side though, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mike yeah, it's not going to be for channels. Ma- no. Mike Ma- 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 uh, Paul Hughes is Mike Mike Chandler was still in the gym on Monday training at uh, Kilcliff, and then yesterday he's like fuck this, and I'm away back to Tennessee. So so it must it must be over, man. It must be. So it. Chandler's actually going home. Oh. He's, a, he's not, ah. Uh, mm. But then it's not as if he's not going to be able, be no, able I, to train. I know. Um, and this could potentially be part of McGregor's plan. Could where he's it? like, get him to drop his guard and then... And then go, what are you talking about? I'm, I'm good to go. Aye. I've just been having a couple of lines of Chico and aye. boozing, man. He <laughs> has been part in it. <laughs> he has been enjoying it. But hey, look, he's also training. Mm. Or, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know when the, the footage is from, the videos from... The sparring footage looked good. Mm-hmm. He looks, he's got his top off. He looks in shape. He doesn't look like he's no training. Yeah. I went out. I went out. I went out Friday night one time, and then I, all Friday stayed out Saturday, and then went to the gym on Sunday and sparred the guys for Aberdeen, like straight to the gym. Man, so it, it it can be done, and if you've got millions of pounds, it can definitely be done. There's right. more people doing it than. All that's happening with Conor McGregor is he gets clocked. He does, if he does Publicized. something, he gets spotted. That's all. Like, I don't know. Greg's yeah, got some news. Um, Hilwani <laughs> said that he's going to report at six o'clock some news on McGregor. Oh, well, that's right. that then. <laughs> well, says 1 p.m. ET, that's six, I think. What do you think? On or off? Go I'm going to say no. I'm, I, I think it's off. Maybe postponed at the mace, but it's definitely not going ahead. <laughs> oh, yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, what, yeah, what, yeah. what film is it? Oh, Gladiator, of Gladiator. course. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. It's my favourite ever. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's my favourite ever. <laughs> um, um, <sighs> was, it, was there an hour fight at the weekend there? Was, was the uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just a couple. <laughs> <laughs> so, he didn't win a round, did he? I think, no, in fact, he won one round. I, gave him one. Won it, I think somebody I gave, fucked I gave up. him one. Mm-hmm. I gave him one. Um, he was just, he was just putting Islam on the back foot at one point, come, mm-hmm. come forward with strikes, and I gave him that round because mm-hmm. he, he just done more basically. But he did take damage in doing Islam that as well. Just, I think Islam was control. The ones he was controlling him had the bag. He, he needed to get them as well. He's always so I had it three one going into the fifth, uh, but it was looking great. Uh, it was looking great up until up until he got got, uh, got caught in submission. Did you watch the the whole event? Him. Did you watch the whole show? Um, no, I, I got it. it the next day. Just the main card. I got any, it for Kevin Holland onwards. Any fights tickle your pickle? No, <laughs> we're all just sitting fan. Well. No, Kevin, Kevin Holland. Holland. <laughs> hey, what's your take? What are you, what are you saying? The guy's got a broken arm and the ref steps in. You've got to allow him to keep going. No, you see, you see Kev, Kevin Holland looking at him like... He talks to him. He's basically huh? saying, ah, he's like, do you want me to break your arm? Because you're, 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 you're fucked. And the guy's all right. And he's just like, fuck you then. I'm good to it. I'm good to it, man. It was, a, it was a correct decision. I don't think the referee should have stepped <clears> in. I think he should have just let him fight. I've I've seen the the film The Warrior, <laughs> and he went on. We're like, we're the the great fucking Tom Hardy goes <laughs> goes forward with traps fucking up to his ears, <laughs> like with his arm broken. It's, it's don't do this, Tommy. He's a tough guy. There can be no doubt about it. Wanting to crack on with a broken like, arm. It was like, 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 it was
it was like HBK, Rick Flair tuning up the band. Just I love you, man. Yeah, I know, <laughs> fucking <laughs> sweet chins and bum. Um, <laughs> good one for Kevin Holland, though. But, Kevin Holland's the dog in the fight, isn't he? He'll turn up anywhere like and fight his, anywhere. I like his promo where he's like, um, what is it? Like, I'll fight anybody, just keep Kevin around or something, but around a wee bit. He's said he's like the best gatekeeper you ever knew. Aye. <laughs> some of just keep Kevin around at the end, but that was it was a great full moment. Um, aye, he's a stud, isn't he? He'll fight anybody. Aye. On short notice. Aye. Yeah. Must have some bad balance as well. I'm going to take all so. these fights. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, see, the, uh, going back to the Dustin fight there, the judges, I'm pretty sure all except one, had it two rounds each going into the fifth. Did you? But nah. on it, that... Mate, that's the judges' cards. But what I'm I'm not aye, no, I'm not I saying not, not aye. For me, not for me. But Kev- did you see in the Costa fight, one of them had Costa <laughs> four one up. <laughs> one judge gave Costa <laughs> four <laughs> rounds. Judging <laughs> fucked up. Aye, so, we need to get with on top that fight, though, that, with that fight is a bit different, so I've all stick up for some of them with that one because albeit Sean just comes forward, man. It's, it's mm. mental, man. Like see if you can't put him out there, he's just gotta keep coming. Mm. Um but Costa was low calf kicking, moving, hitting where, where the first round, maybe round the half, like Sean wasn't thrown anything. Mm-hmm. So you, you, you go to get to Costa. I think Costa hurt his leg though, eh? Did you notice yeah. when he was throwing some uh, of those low kicks, he, he, you could sort of, he'd throw them and then you could see it on his to. face. And I thought, oh, that's been checked and he's hurt his cell there. But um, We'll need to end the uh, Zoom uh, and send a link to Bungie again. He's got to cut out in a wee minute here. Oh, we've got his on guard. I'll send another link over a minute. We'll talk about all right. Right, right, guys, you are very lucky enough to be listening to this podcast because we are sponsored by Anaconda and Anaconda's got your back if you are suffering from any sort of injuries and looking for a little bit of support. Ross, where can they find Anaconda? You can get on anacondafightwear.co, you'll get two knee braces for $59 or any rash guard for $24.95. If you put in leather 10 at the checkout, you'll get 10% off. Guys, it makes sense. Rather than suffering and going to the gym every day and that little niggling shoulder, just need a little bit of support, why not do something about it? And why not use leather 10 and get yourself a little bit of a discount and make yourself feel lovely and warm in the gym? Keep it anaconda. I went to the daughter's school today. Mm-hmm. Um, the school's got like a, is it like, some f- not fitness health week so I offer my services to go into the school as a healthy guy as a healthy guy <laughs> yep uh, just going to pair on the teachers remember I have a, have a face for teachers so anyway <laughs> uh, I get an opportunity to go to the school and they basically give me a gym hall a couple of mats in the middle of the, the hall and basically just Tell the kids my story. Um, dug, out, dug out my old Bama belt. It's in the car. I'll maybe bring it in. I've no, I've, I've no, uh, I've no seen it in a while. So I pulled out that. I had like my IBB, IBJJF medals I won in Abu Dhabi, um, and then just put them out some cards and let them see them. Tell my That's story. Cool, tell right? them how I got there, um, and then showed them some self defence because I'm I'm not big in showing kids how to hurt each other, mm-hmm. but I'm in. I'm quite big in showing kids how to defend themselves. So this is like between primary five to seven. Um, and I was just showing them how to like break some of these grips if they come at you. Tricky age to navigate as well. To create distance. And like my, what I said to the kids was, if a fight starts, the best thing you can do is run away. Mm-hmm. Um, so I showed them how to break the grips, showed them how to, if somebody's got you with a collar, how to do it. And this wee guy had grabbed my T-shirt. So I had like a, what do you call it? Like a... What's that t-shirt called? My Mike Tyson one. Mm-hmm. And he grabbed it. And he grabbed it too tight. <laughs> and he made, like, like, like basically like <laughs> destroyed your Mike Tyson face. Destroyed my Mike Tyson. <laughs> I was like, ah, you, yes. you, you little jerk. <laughs> and then I had like loads of cards that uh, Panini had sent me. So I had like all these, um, it was loads of different. So it was like mm-hmm. a pack. Remember we get the, the mm-hmm. booster packs in here we opened up. And I just gave them all to the kids because they thought they were getting a card in me. And I was like, ah, you don't want a card in me, what you want is you want in Polo Costa. <laughs> so I was just dashing out all these cards, uh, gave a few to the teachers. Um, but it was it was good. Um, you forget actually how how big MMA and UFC is. Mm-hmm. And it just makes sense to like spend a wee bit of time to go in to see. Breaks up there. Skills. Like for them, that's probably a huge 
It was an hour. Aye. An hour. That's a big I thing, though. Spoke half an hour to them and then did half an hour of uh, technique. Mm -hmm. um, it was good, but the one of the best things was my daughter's face. She was, like, pure chuffed. Aye. Like, really, like, Because it's a tricky one, eh? You Aye. never know, like, are they going to be... Because I had asked her, I'd said that to her, I was like, do you want me to come into your school? Mm -hmm. She was like, yes. Aye. So I was like, right, if she's happy when we get in, I'm more than happy to... Because she's, what, eight, nine? Ten. Ten? Aye, uh, she's in primary five. Oh, fucking hell. I know, Fly. time flies in it, man. <laughs> um, so I... So it was cool when all mm -hmm. the wee guys are like, I do karate, I do this. And it, so it was just nice like, to go in and pass on like some information. And obviously my story is like, I grew up in that area so mm -hmm. I can beat them. Listen, I know quite a lot of your parents. <laughs> I grew up in... I grew up with your mum and dad. Eh? Right? Um, and, and just showing them that hard work, because that's what I said to them. I was like, I'm not the most talented guy in my division. I am not the most talented guy in my gym. Never mind in my division, but what I do is I work hard, mm -hmm. um, and through working hard, you can get anything you want. And it doesn't matter if it's MMA or if it's the, what, I, what I normally say is ballet dancing and flower arranging. Mm -hmm. If you put as much effort into that as you would with YouTube or you would with any sort of watching TV, watching all this shit on social media, if you put half the time into doing something mm -hmm. constructive, you're going to be good at anything. I think the thing is, so so many young people have got like no blueprint. Mm -hmm. There's no starting point. Like, where do, where do we begin here? I know. And it's like, so when I, I talk to my son about this very often, I'm like, and he, he's he's always like, you expect so much from me. And I'm like, no, I didn't. I'm like, I expect what you're capable of. Aye. And like, I know you can do this. And like, what annoys me is you're you're coasting the now and you're still banging it out of the park. Like, Aye. got his report for school the other day and they just used the old traffic light system. Everything came in green. Aye. And I'm like, you're green and no trying. That annoys me. Aye, I'm so like, because, and I, and, he, and he's like, aye, but it's too easy. And I'm like, I don't know, then just fucking be that good. It makes everyone else look bad. I don't know. I don't know what to, but when I think back to like my goals as a wee guy, they were so fucking basic. Eh? They were not, like, it was like. And there's so many opportunities for kids now. Like, aye. If you want to be something, like when we were growing up, if, if you were. There's told, no information. Do you want to be a fighter? If you want to be. <laughs> do you know where to go to be a fighter? No. Do you, do you know where to be if you want to be in other than a professional football? Aye. Because that was really the only thing we really had was if you were And even football, then, where did you go? Right. Even, You'd have to train yeah. a and team you, and then work your way through that way. And if you didn't have a mum or a dad who could take you to games, that was, that was over. It was over. <laughs> Just like that. But now there's so many, like, there's so much in your doorstep. Like, your kids have got great opportunities. Aye. And there's so many people they can, they can look on social Aye. media and go, right, what did you do? Because, like, our, I remember this clearly. Like, I didn't know anyone who went to uni. The successful people I knew had a trade and had their own van. They were absolute top of the pyramid. Aye. That was like, but then that was that was a big thing to be seen. Aye, like I, I'm not saying it's no. That's what like see to have a trade under your belt, mm -hmm. staying in a house with a chick that you enjoyed. Aye, that was that was like a dream. Own, owning a house and having a van and a trade. That was the absolute. They were top of the pyramid. Mm -hmm. And now I'm not saying that's still not a, an excellent achievement. I'm just saying like. Fuck, if I'd... If I can't I'd get this. I don't know what's up with audio. No, it's no pulling dungies through at all. Guys, it's just coming into summer. Summer has just sprung. The weather is lovely. But what you might find is the roads are getting a little bit busier. People are travelling. People are going on holiday. They're driving down to England. And if you find yourself in an accident that is non-fault, why not hit up G4 Claims and they will handle your whole claim. Ross, where can we hit them up? You can get them at 01698 767 172 and that's on WhatsApp as well. Or you can get them at notatfaultclaim.com or follow the link in our bio. It makes sense if you have been involved in an on-fault accident. And why would I pick G4 Claims? Well, they're going to give you a courtesy card, your whole claim. They're also going to get you 100% of your claim as well. And they're going to handle all the nonsense that goes along with a, a small bump, a large bump, it doesn't matter. So it makes sense to use G4 claims. Uh, so I went to school, did a wee bit of that. Um, you like that though? I I did that. Obviously. Actually, um, we were at the sports day today and I, I, it's funny because I mentioned you, I was like, this is where I see Paul as a teacher. Because there's kids that are running, but they don't get a fuck. Their teachers are trying to like get them to the next event. They're just like, nah, fuck, I'm away to this different one instead. Right. And I'm like, it's teachers like Paul. You need to go. Stop being a fucking idiot and go to where you're meant to. Aye. Like, that, I, is, I was using the old teacher voice today. Right, guys, aye. enough. Right, right. If you're not listening, you're not being involved. Aye. It, it automatically kicks back. Is it in? Is it no? I don't want to say in character. 
but almost to a point, like there is a, I'm, I'm the authority person here. Aye, and you're know, Dane, as I say. So see when you've not been in school for a while, <laughs> the thing you need to watch out is the old, fuck. Oh. Hey, you wee f- fuck flippers. <laughs> you little flippers. Aye. So like, obviously we don't have a filter. So if we want to swear, you're like, you're like, stop your fucking nonsense. Like Aye. if we're having a conversation, yeah. we'll, we'll cuss at each other. In school, obviously not allowed. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I, 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 I really have to, like, really have to turn on, like, do not fucking swear. Do not, like, <laughs> <laughs> do not fucking swear, Mr. Craig. Um, um, but no, nah, I was like, I do miss it. Mm-hmm. Um, I will do it more and more. Um, obviously, I'm getting a little bit older. I'm going to have more time. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. Oh, wee phone call. Do you feel like you kind of owe it back, though? Yeah. Aye, you know, it's, it's easy enough for us. Like, Aye, Bungie, sorry, I don't know what's up with the Zoom, mate, but so I've just can record you the conversation through this. It's easy enough yeah, to yeah. give up an hour of your day in it to go to your school and, and, and pass on some right. some some heartwarming shit that where I came from and how I made it to the UFC. I feel weird that we can't see Chris. I know. Apologies, but I don't know what the fuck's up there. So he's he's been on the subject of Strickland. Aye, where were we? What were we saying? So Strickland, does he then Uh, move forward to fight for the title? That's what I want to know. I don't don't think so, man. Why not? Because I don't think it was that good enough performance, to be fair. But you've got to remember, Costa's still in the mix. He's still one of the top guys Mm -hmm. in that division. So why would you not give him a title shot? Would you give him Izzy? I don't know. Um, who's, who's even fighting for the title? It would be it's Drickus and Drickus. Adesanya, isn't it? Right. Am I right in saying Is pre- Ad- Adesanya definitely fighting for that? Um, I might be wrong there, but I, I'm fairly certain that's been confirmed. I think they're setting up for, for Hamza. Hamza Chimayev. If he beats beat, beat Bobby Knuckles. He's fighting him in uh, Saudi Arabia, isn't Aye, he? that's soon, eh? Aye. Aye. Aye, uh, so um, I don't know. Like that, that that performance is struggling. Then they scream out, Champion. "Let's see him in DGP again." I don't know. It's not something I would like to see. I don't know. Like Strickland's is tough. I, like, I like him, but I don't know. Like he can't even speak a lot of shit and stone up. We try to jab people and lift your leg up to defend a low kick. You know what I mean, they've done that for twenty five minutes, and it was like. Uh, and I know I don't want to see that I don't want to see that again for 35 minutes Strickland sort of chased Costa rather than cut him off do you know what I mean like I, I feel like so he, he sort of chased the last 10, <laughs> he only attacked the last 10 seconds and then like you're like well, we're not too old 34 minutes what I mean it was a bit of a lacklustre performance by Costa though mm. I, and I, I don't I feel like he's maybe just had an off night there rather than Strickland mm. coming out to the press conference going ah well you don't know how good someone is until they fight somebody good I think that is underselling Costa a wee bit. I don't know. I Aye. think I think Sean Strickland's style makes people look shitter than there. Aye, I think he didn't want to come for, get and banged in a puss. And eh? if you don't, and if you don't have space, it's very hard to pull off these big spinning kicks, these big heavy shots. Mm-hmm. The way <laughs> Costa <laughs> fights, I know he just couldn't <laughs> stop him coming forward. I know. There, was, there was nothing. There was nothing coming back enough to really make. Strickland you know up. what it's like if somebody's in the gym always putting pressure on you. It basically tires you. Aye. So Aye. Remember, remember sparring with Big Neil Laird. That's the way he. That's Aye. the way he fought. Just he was shots just coming from everywhere. And it's hard. It's hard to. It's hard to throw back when you're on the back foot and you're trying to get away from him. Just mm-hmm. coming forward. That was one of Neil's like big weapons. Mm-hmm. Was the fact that the guy had crazy cardio and he had really good uh, pressure moving forward. And you're trying what, to throw your own about stuff. Uh, entrance song, Ross, like that? I know. So I had to watch the fights with the volume down because I was in my bed. What was his song? It was like the American Army song, wasn't it? The, oh, was it? You know, the, the Soviet one. It was the, uh, what is it? What's the name of it? The, Greg's ah, just bringing it up no. now because obviously yeah. the America's man of the hour when Johnny comes marching home, fucking hell. <laughs> What, what hurrah, about, hurrah. Aye, aye, that was it. But they all just run to Trump this. It's like Mate, Trump's just a gimmick there. They're like, let's jump the fence. Kevin Rowan Rowan Rowan. And they just run uh, right to Trump. It's like, I get it. He, he, he was game. the president, but... Big cheer as well but, for me when he walked out. Oh, they literally love it. Love, he's part Stop. of the set now. He's part of the... Like, he has an entrance. Aye. He walks through everybody. Like, it's he mental. It. He's aye. not part of the show, man. It's... Uh, I, I get where Dana White's saying... Like, I want to repay Trump. Trump put a lot of faith into Dana White and letting him put on shows right back at the beginning. 
when and that's mm-hmm. why Dana White uh, no um, when the UFC was just starting up they couldn't get a venue oh, right, and right, right. Donald Trump was one of the first people to say listen you can come to my casino and you can put this event on it's, yeah. it's all good with me well he obviously it, it was, it was doing well. it with Covid as well though didn't I, he did, did, cause did we had to, through Covid as well like on my uh, visa to get into America it was a presidential pardon to get to get through because remember that was Trump <sighs> everything was shut down if it, wasn't, if it wasn't for Trump then he's like we wouldn't have been able to fight and wherever it was we ended up fighting we've, we've pulled up the 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 top 10 and obviously Sean Strickland's number 1 Adesanya's number 2 obviously are they looking at 305 for Adesanya versus Duplessis so where does that leave Sean Strickland at number 1 how can Adesanya just come off losses and go right into the title shots man He's yeah, about four times. Every I, time he's been I, beat, he's, he's fought for the title again. I'm not disagreeing. Like, I, you're, you're, you're right. Don't fucking fight some Delsha fucking me. Fucking cat shagger or other fucking shagging. <laughs> <laughs> I don't jump my dog off, man. Did you hear Aye, Strickland talking? Aye. 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 <laughs> so, so, the, so the top five is uh, Vittori, uh, Jared Cannonier, oh, Robert Whitaker, Adesanya and Sean Strickland. So I think is Cannonier fighting this weekend? I don't know. I think he's fighting this weekend. I'm not sure who. Greg will be able to find okay. out. But I don't know that what else you do with Sean Strickland. The uh, the uh, Gal- Galadzi, is it? Oh, I think maybe we're fighting him. Uh, I think Strickland says he's got to wait anyway. Uh, wait it out. So Emma, this is Sunday. This is the 9th, so this is this weekend. So it's Cannonier versus who? Is it Imavov? I can't even fucking see Aye, that. Something like that. Something like that. You need the uh, Joe Rogan where he's like, nah, 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 whatever. <laughs> so some Russian guy. What what ranking is he? If you can pull that back up. Is what he ranked? About, well, where's, where's Brendan Allen? Where's he kicking about? He's like number six. Aye. How many fights do you think he now needs to get a shot? Then true. You beat. You go up against somebody like Marvin Vittori, and then you're automatically. And no, that's what I he's a slug, isn't he, man? He's an absolute orc. Cannon, he's 40, by the way. I've seen the uh, Barojo's 12 as well. He's kind of climbing up there. All right. So, look, the, 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 the divisions, uh, the, there's going to be a lot of movement, but I don't know what you do with Sean Strickland if you don't give him the title shot. If you don't <laughs> if you don't have Adesanya and Duplessis fighting at 305 for the title and you don't give Sean Strickland the, the winner, then I don't know who else you get to. He's I don't know what else you do with that. time as well. Like, he's took the last minute fights. He's he's jumped in for yeah. fights. He's fought these Russian wrestlers who they thought would beat him. He's done all this for them. Like, he'd, he's kind of earned this, eh? Yeah. I, I feel like he has put the work in for the for the company. He's been a good company guy. Right. He's brought a lot of views to the UFC. He says a lot of things that are a bit controversial, but for a while there he was the most clicked on UFC athlete Mm -hmm. like his videos were doing the most numbers he was he's been a fucking solid company guy like do you think people are clicking on Islam Makhachev videos are they fuck so here's here's the next thing like you've obviously (laughs) got Whitaker versus um, Hamza Mm Chimaev you don't want to do that to Sean Strickland you don't want to if I'm Sean Strickland I'm not taking any of the two of them regardless of who wins Mm -hmm. Because I'm 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 so close to the title, so <clears throat> that's regard, what he said. Aye, regardless of day two, you're not going to step up and take right. a fight against him. You're going to be like, no, I'll wait for the winner of the places versus Adesanya. I agree. And mm-hmm. Whitaker gets a lot Fuck of love for the <laughs> Whitaker gets a lot of love for the fans as well. And right. I think because everybody, when he said he was injured and couldn't fight, I believe him. Eh? I think right. he was a hundred percent genuine. And I think the fans just see him as a genuine good guy. So mm-hmm. he's a guy who can get a wee bit of leeway, but. I don't know if the fans either. I don't think the fans like Adesanya. I don't think he's a fan favourite. So I, 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 I maybe kinda, I'm I, wrong. I, no, no, maybe I, I, I'm kinda, wrong. I know where you're coming from. I kind of do agree with you on that. I think people were glad Sean Strickland beat him. And I, I, don't, I never like to say, like, I like to see a certain person lose. But I'm also like, I, f- I was glad Sean Strickland won. It was a great ending to the story, so to speak. But now it's just like... It's, it's the MMA world. Aye. People love to see the champion getting dethroned. Like, Tyrone Woodley, everybody was excited when he got beat. <sighs> and, like, how many other champions have been like that? When Kamara Usman get beat, people are like, yes! And, like, this, everybody was excited for these people to be a champion, and now everybody's, like, fucking dethroned them. And I love to see it. I, I like, uh, it's the flavour of the month, isn't it? I know. The flavor of the month, I know. 
I, I, although I do, what? I like it when there's a change because a new champion means different fights. I, I enjoy that, but all we're seeing now at 185 is the same fights right. over and over. Greg, what you saying? I know, can I get your thoughts on what do you think? Do you think Dustin will fight again after his comments or do you think he's done? Um, I don't think he, he's obviously coming to the end of his career and that's he, he feels it. I mean, he still puts in a, a, a five round performance against Islam Makachev, Very who good. I'm going to go out and say, isn't he that great? It wasn't that great against us, then. Like, people are, like, I, I don't know what he did Ooh. in that division. <laughs> uh, like, he's not that great. Who's he beat? I mean, he's he, a pound he, for pound number one. He I mean, he's definitely he's not the pound for pound number one. Um, like, he's no beat MD. He's fought uh, what, one five five or twice. <laughs> he did last week. He did one. I, I think if he goes up to, Leo, uh, if he goes to 170 and tries to fit, he'll get battered. Eh? I think a 170 pound guy will kick his head in. Did you see the size difference? Aye, from him Leon. <clears throat> Aye. I think we'll somebody like, Leon, well, Leon. who who's the sort of the top five at one seventy now? So you've obviously got Leon, Usman, Bilal, and Shavkat. Like, I don't, do, you, do you know? Do you know what pisses me off? You know what pisses me off about this? See when John Jones moved up to for light heavyweight to heavyweight, he mm -hmm. cleared out the division. Mm -hmm. When you look at guys who move up, like uh, Volk moving up to fight Islam, mm -hmm. he cleared out the division. Mm -hmm. Islam's not even fucking made a dent in it. No. This is exactly what Dana White said, because he said as long as John Jones is still active, he'll always be the pound for pound best fighter, because they were having that argument. Well, uh, I, so I are they saying that. Islam's number one, one in the pound for pound? Well, people were saying that, yep. and Dana White said, Tash. no. No, he, he is actually, he is actually ranked. All oh, right, I saw he is ranked. Yeah. Yeah. I think this that, is number one bullshit. I think if Islam Makachev fights <laughs> against Armin Sarukian like he did against Dustin Poy, he'll get beat. Aye. Like and, and I'm not maybe Aye. maybe Islam just didn't have a great night. He found Dust Dustin was fucking and he was ready to go the distance. Like he was good, mate. He so, put on a fucking So Islam <clears throat> there's like there should be Dana White should be like, no, you're not moving up because you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna obviously jump to the head of the line and the uh welterweight. Mm -hmm. You're gonna leave the division a champion away for maybe six months to a year. Right. Like, it just fucks up the division. Tell him, no, he's not going anywhere. Fight, fight Armin. Fight fucking Justin Gaethje. Let him aye. kick a hole through your head. Aye. Um, Michael Chandler. Aye. Like, there's, there's there's so many guys he can fight, and he's wanting to move up weight to get this big fight. It does my tits in. I feel Everybody's like wanting these big fights, these big money fights. It's, they're not for everyone. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. Islam, I'm not saying Islam Akhachev. Islam Akhachev is obviously brilliant, but he's no... Like he's the fans are just never going to like him, mate. And I know he's got fucking eight and a half million followers on Instagram. I'm going to stop you there because we're going to find out why the fans don't like him from Ross's <laughs> mouth. We're moving over to Patreon, guys. If you're interested to see why the fans do not like Hamzet, Hamzet Shemaev, find like out why him. they don't like him either. But yeah. Ross is going to tell us. So switch over to the Patreon. <laughs>